without further ado, let's jump into it. Uh, so I want to thank you, uh, gentlemen, for, for being here with us today. I'm really excited to talk to you guys about MLS. But first and foremost, uh, we have three team members here. Uh, would you guys mind kind of introducing yourselves and telling us a little bit about who you are, what your role is with the project, and uh, kind of what got you into the Web3 space? Yeah, of course. I'm happy to go ahead first. Uh, I'm Oscar. I'm one of the co-founders of Mineralistings. Listings. All of, all of us here are. I'm head of partnerships and marketing, so I handle everything on that front as well as the NFT. Just to give you some background on myself, I've been in crypto since 2017. Uh, I got into NFTs full time about a year and a half ago, and I was just doing biz dev at a tech startup before that. I I actually started off with 10 free NFTs from a friend. Uh, I don't know if you guys have heard of them before, but they were party penguins. It was a pudgy penguin derivative. And that was like prime time for bull market. Everything was kind of popping off. Um, they were dead for a week, though. They weren't even minted out. And they ended up mooning out of nowhere. And that's kind of how I made my first few ETH. And that was kind of my foray into NFTs. Um, or first foray, foray into NFTs. Ended up trading my way up, and I got pretty well connected within the space. Very, gone to various communities like Neo Tokyo, uh, Mechaverse, Kaiju Kings. So I was pretty fortunate, um, and gone to other blue chip communities soon after as well. So met a lot of cool people along the way, and that's been uh, a big help for the project. Um, aside from that, I also noticed a huge gap in the market while I was kind of trading, um, for specific specifically for Web three gaming as well as Metaverse land. And that's what we focus on in meta listings. Uh, the rest of my team members also experienced the same thing. Uh, we kind of just uh, resonated over that and got together to create this. Excited to show you guys today. Um, Rich and Diane are here themselves today. So why don't you guys give an intro? Hey, guys. Hey, thanks for having us. Uh, my name's Rich. Uh, uh, yeah, to give some background on myself, I'm a co-founder and CEO. I'm in charge of all the investors investor side fun stuff not really fun <laughs> and also strategic partnerships so we recently signed uh, immutable x one of the big gaming blockchains and we're working with a partnership with uh, binance and aftos one of the new layer ones really exciting stuff that they're working on i came from a traditional background in terms of business i worked in a um a marketing agency that did push campaigns for jp morgan and adidas and they transitioned over to Web3 in about 2020, late 2020, and learn a lot from what the big players are doing. Um, they're spending a lot of energy and money into our space. So I got really excited in that. And uh, being a gamer my whole life got me really interested in this Web3 gaming concept. And I actually played like, I actually sold WoW accounts like back when I was in high school. So I was fairly like used to this play to earn concept. Um, afterwards, it's been a crazy ride. Uh, we got we got hosted by LG Electronics at Silicon Valley for Meta Listings. Uh, won some money from them, Consensus. And we won another hackathon by Consensus, and they gave us money. Um, so it's been, you know, we saw a lot of early traction with the project uh, from really big players in the traditional industries. And Oscars are plug into Web3. Uh, and Diane and myself have traded NFTs and um, since the very beginning. So we're very, very interested in giving back to the space and building something really, really interesting. And, and before we, we get to, to Diane, uh, sorry, I just heard some clicking and some some mouse uh, movement there. Are you pulling a Sam um, Fried Bankman on us? Uh, <laughs> honestly, are, you play, are you playing League of Legends right now? <laughs> There's no problem if you are. I just love it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm a gamer. I gotta be. I gotta be gaming. Damn. <laughs> awesome. I love it. You know, right, you know what's funny? It actually it says you're playing a game right now. <laughs> like you have it. No, you're not. You're not. I know you're not actually playing. It just says you're in a lobby, which is funny. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I love it. No, no. You can't be successful unless you're playing a. I, I think that's an awesome. Don't. I'm not. I'm not roasting you. I just thought it was funny. Um, <laughs> Diane, oh, excuse my dogs, but Diane, you can go ahead and go. <laughs> That's funny. Um, thanks for having us, guys. I'm Diane. I am head of product at Meta Listings. I'm also a co-founder. Diane, sorry to interrupt. You're a little quiet. Uh, is it better now? Uh, it's, a, it's kind of sounds like you're kind of talking louder. <laughs> Let me switch to my phone. Give me a second. Okay, no worries. All good. I, I'm excited. 
Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, I was I was just saying I, I I'm excited uh, to, to a talk to you guys, but I'm excited specifically because uh, Diane's got a kaiju, correct? Yeah, I, I have kaiju as well. Um, I we got in on mint together. Um, I, me too. Have two. We're OGs. Nice, nice, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I minted. I was pretty fortunate. I had some Nox cards, so I was able to mint four, and then I picked up two on secondary afterwards. Hell yeah. Well, Diane, uh, it sounds like your mic is much better now. Yeah, I switched to my phone. Sorry, I'm on my desktop. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Um, so I'll introduce myself again. Um, I'm Diane. I'm head of product at Meta Listings, and I'm also a co-founder. Um, I'm an avid gamer. I trade NFTs, um, and I'm actually a UI UX designer. So we'll show you our demo today, and I'm very excited to hear your thoughts. Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. Well, that's great. Uh, thanks for the introduction, guys. Uh, I have a lot of respect for UX and UI, so uh, it's great to hear. Um, well, great. Uh, so before we kind of get into a demo or anything, can you guys tell us just a little bit about what MLS is looking to do uh, for the space? What exactly it is? Give us just a quick high view outlook on, on what MLS is trying to be. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up, actually, because I was going to do a quick intro before we got into it. Uh, so what we've created is a multi-chain aggregator focused on Web3 gaming and NFTs that actually have utility. So we have avatars, assets, and land, all of which are, are relevant to games, of course. Uh, we have a better UI UX compared to generic marketplaces for with a focus on these games. And we also have a incentive, an incentives program that is focused on giving free NFTs and tokens from the games that we partner with back to everyone that comes onto our platform. So whether you hold our NFT or not, the NFT holders will benefit more. Um, but whether you hold it or not, you will be able to get free NFTs and tokens constantly. Okay, wow. Uh, and apologies if you hear me in the background. I am not gaming, but I am... <laughs> uh awesome well let's kind of go into a demo and then i can ask questions as we go along if that's cool yeah for sure for sure um let me just share my screen and let me know when you guys can see it okay yeah. i'm not sure if your recording will be able to record the share screen as well uh we, we i believe we will be able to if okay, that's okay. okay perfect no no no, no. go ahead because this is a fairly visual product so it's um it's important to be able to actually see what's going on it, it, I'm really excited. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I was just gonna say I'm really excited to to hear what everyone thinks today. It's it's a pretty exclusive sneak peek of our beta. We haven't shown too me too many communities yet so far, so really really excited to hear what everyone thinks about it and just get some feedback. Yeah. Um, sorry. What were you gonna say? I I don't want to start quite yet. Just before I know oh. I'm good to go. I was I was just gonna say uh, no, sorry. I ignore me. I'm I'm a jokester. I like to joke about things. Uh, I was just gonna say if for some reason we can't get the recording, I'll do a puppet show to show what it looks like. Uh, and so I hate it when that happens. I always get interrupted when I'm making a dumb joke. So if someone's like, "What were you gonna say?" Ryan? and it's like, uh, I don't want to say it. No, no worries, man. You're good. You're good. Uh, um, okay. Right. Yeah. Let's let's just get into it. Can you see my screen? All right. Yep. See, it's perfect. Okay, yep. perfect. Yeah, so when you first land on our platform, you're immediately presented with a planet that represents all the different blockchains and games together. We just thought this was a fun way to represent an interconnected metaverse because there's thousands of different games and thousands of different marketplaces all being built independently right now, and it just didn't make a lot of sense to us. What we have right now is currently just a placeholder, but this will all be interactive. You'll be able to play around with the map and zoom into respective collections and maps when you click on a country. If you don't really know where to go, though, you can scroll down. You immediately see some trending destinations as well as our featured games. So this is a bit more similar to Steam. It's kind of uh, our focus on game, uh, get pushing game discoverability. On the right, you'll be able to see what specific game you're looking at as well as the tag. Uh, you'll be able to watch a trailer. But what makes MLS special is that you'll actually be able to play games directly through our platform as well. We have a bit about some of the trending collections, and at the very bottom, it's more about our NFT. Uh, I'll get into this a, a bit more later, but the main takeaway is that this is going to be launching with our platform around the same time in early 2023, and all of the utility, all of the lore, everything is always brought back to MetaListings, so it's deeply integrated into our marketplace. 
and you guys will get some spots. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have told them yet, but um, so we have, when you scroll up, we have an I'm flexible option. So this is a bit similar to Airbnb. If you don't really know where to go, we've basically broken them down into different categories. So you can look at games that are currently playable as well as the ones that are in development. And at the top, of course, you can sort by genres as well. The main focus here, though, is to push for discoverability. Without ever having to click into a specific game, you'll be able to get an idea of what it's all about just based on the GIFs. Uh, I think this is probably best shown by Delicium. You can see that it's clearly a shooter. There are a, a few features that I wanted to highlight in our other deed, uh, our by other side, though. So when you click in, uh, you're immediately presented with a map. When you're looking at Metaverse land, it's especially important to have locational context. So this is a feature where we took some inspiration from Zillow. Um, you'll be able to see pins that represent how many plots are listed within a specific area. As you zoom in more and more, you can get more and more defined exact listings. You can hover over one of the actively listed homes and just get an idea of some quick high level, the ID, the coordinates of that plot, the price it's listed for, as well as the top trait. Um, of course, for other side, it's going to be Coda, but for something like Sandbox, it'll be whether or not it's premium land. A feature that I'm especially excited for that is something that I've just wanted for a long, long time, and it just makes so much sense to have, but no one's ever done it, is finally being able to sweep with locational context. So you can actually choose specific properties just based on its location. So all you have to do is you click this button, and then you'll be able to choose whatever plots you'd like, like these three right next to each other, for example. And then you can proceed to pay just like that. It's made really, really easy. Uh, of course, we have the list view as well, and we're going to have sweeping here, but that won't be coming out in our beta. Uh, we understand that this is just sticky and people are used to it. Our, our, as I said, our team's made up entirely of NFT traders. So people are used to having the list view. You can click into details as well, uh, see a bit more about the uh, the property. So from a glance, you'll be able to see whether or not it's rare. We've basically color coded them into common, uncommon, rare, epic, and legendary. And for other sites specifically, you'll be able to see a bit more about the coda as well. Going back to the map view, uh, on the right, you'll be able to see the list of all the different listings that there are. Um, and of course, because we're an aggregator, we'll have the listings from other marketplaces as well. But I, I do think that the rewards from our marketplace are going to be a lot better. Uh, you can also sort by items that have been recently sold. So again, a little similar to Zillow, uh, you'll be able to see the, what your neighbors sold for, basically. You get an idea of what your property is worth just based on the, the rough locational context. Of course, properties come into play and traits and everything, but we thought this was a fun idea to implement. Um, on the top left, we have an about section, and this is a bit more focused on the game itself. So you can see the status, the genre, and the overall reviews from the community. On the left, you can see a trailer, pictures, and videos uh, about the game itself. Uh, on the right, you can read a description and see the overall upvotes from the community. And of course, we have a play button as well. But for other side, it's not playable. But if it was, there'd be a big play button right here. Uh, there's system requirements needed. Uh, you can see the system requirements needed to run the game, the commercial rights, as well as a bit more about the game itself. We've created a curated learning section to better understand its ecosystem. And at the very bottom, we actually have a review section. So rather than just being a, a standard marketplace, we wanted to actually focus on the content side of things and be able to interact with other people on our platform. So you can see reviews from verified holders, as well as some of the gameplay and videos from the game itself. Uh, aside from just land, of, of course, we offer uh, assets and avatars as well. They're equally as important. So just hopping into Treeverse, for example, you'll be able to see the land we have here. We don't have a map because they don't have a map, uh, but you'll be able to see the assets that they offer, as well as their avatars needed to play in their game. A bit more about our NFT. So at the very bottom, as I said, everything is always brought back to our holders. And I'll get a bit more into how our rewards incentives work. So our holders are going to benefit from features like exclusive Viator only missions, which I'll talk a bit more about in our mission log. But they'll get access to rare survival kits that will be funded um, by both our game partners that we work with and our marketplace royalties. Because we have so many close relationships with the up and coming promising games, our holders aren't only going to get early access to play them, but they'll also get paid to beta test some of them as well. 
They'll be able to vote on new features and games that are in our pipeline, get multipliers on mission rewards, get discounted fees on our platform, which is something that we're discussing right now as well, but that'll be permanent, as well as future airdrops for both our token and our VX collection. Uh, the most important thing to take away from here, though, is our survival kits and our mission rewards. Some of you guys have probably noticed the EXP bar on the top right, as well as our mission log. Uh, I'll go into this a bit more. So our platform's uh, essentially a game within a game. We have engaging missions that reward users along the way and push for game discoverability. So you'll actually be able to level up as you trade and explore all these different games that we have on our platform. I think that's a big part of what will make uh, deeply integrate uh, deeply cement our position within the space. Apologies. Uh, we've we've already partnered with twenty top notch up top notch up and coming games, and they all look amazing. A lot of them come from big game studios, and they're actually giving us NFTs to give back to our community. So with our NFT, you'll essentially be able to be exposed to all the up and coming Web three games without ever needing to grind. Uh, the first mission we have right here is the application for our whitelist. You guys will be able to bypass that with some of the spots that we give. Um, but future missions are going to include getting into games and completing a certain task or transacting on our platform to get rewarded. So uh, a mission, for example, could be to get into a game and get five headshots, and then you'll get rewarded directly through our platform. We're able to track this because we integrate with the games and give them SDKs, and we're able to see it all on our end afterwards. Uh, and as you level up, your, your rewards will have a higher and higher chance to be rare. So at the end of every single season, we'll have survival kits and loot crates, kind of similar to TF2 and CSGO crates. And our prizes are going to vary from NFTs, like other deeds, to game tokens that actually have instant liquidity and you'll be able to sell right away. Uh, every single one of our holders will be able to claim a prize every season. While non-holders will have a limited supply to claim, uh, they'll be able to, they'll, but they'll have to race to the end for it. And as I mentioned earlier, the way we're going to be funding these crates are through our game partners as well as our marketplace royalties. And the marketplace royalties are just the last thing I'll touch on. Uh, it's an interesting new concept that we're experimenting with. It's royalties on gains. So kind of a situation where if you win, then we win as well. We, we value supporting creators, so figured that this was an interesting take. Uh, if you buy something for 50 ETH, for example, and sell it for 45 ETH on our platform, then there's zero royalties. But if you sell it for 55 ETH, then we'll take royalties just on the 5 ETH that you made. That's everything I'm able to show today for the demo. Uh, the main takeaway, though, is that the dividers are going to be the entire fuel for our ecosystem, and we'll let users tap into Web3 Gaming without ever needing to grind. They'll, they'll get better NFT or they'll get free NFTs and access to a better UI UX. Um, that's that's everything. Excited to hear what you guys think. That's incredible. Uh, and you know, there's always that one thing that you're not supposed to say, but you maybe could say. Do you have any? I'm just kidding. <laughs> we need that kind of alpha. This is amazing. I'm getting some reactions from the chat and things, yeah. and, and pe people are, are really loving uh, what they're That's seeing. That's good to hear. It's good to hear. So, 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 I mean, like, to be honest, when you guys go into one of these meetings with an investor or with a potential, you know, new game, do you guys ever say we're trying to be the Zillow of the metaverse? Is that is that how you guys kind of approach it, approach it, or kind of position yourself? So we kind of went about it that way before, um, but now I think we've kind of evolved to be a mix. So we're we're Zillow of the metaverse, but we're also Steam of the metaverse and a lot of other different things. So I uh, I don't know. What do you think, Rich? I think you have a different take on it. Uh, I think both are correct, but the thing with gaming now is the assets are now properties. So it's almost like. You're both right. You know, uh, Steam focuses on digital assets that are not properties. You don't own them, while Zillow is real properties and you own them. But Web3 Gaming like combined those two things. So I guess we're a Zillow or a Steam, um, so something like that. Um, but you know, for for we're so early in the space. When I talk to investors, they that's the easiest way to click for them. So so in that sense, you're right.
Awesome. Uh, you know, I have so many questions. My first question is like, okay, so and, and, and I'm, I'm pretty sure you led with it because it's one of the most breathtaking parts of this is is seeing, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it? Um, other deeds, uh, map, right? That's just a, you know, a showstopper. <laughs> so to do that, did did they give you access to the map? Is that is that is that already public? I, I'm I'm not in other deeds at all, but. Mm. Is that already public, or did did they give you special access to to some kind of you know API? Or the, the, do you guys have proof that they're developing that game? Like, like I'm just curious how that. Works. We actually rebuilt the entire map, reverse engineered every bit of it, and there's a hundred thousand plots. So it took some time, and um, all of the data came from the blockchain and data aggregators, and essentially we put all the piece of, uh, pieces of the puzzle together, and then it all worked. So we're like, perfect, this is Web3. It's open protocols. Everything can be built on each other. It's like Linux, but like on steroids. So yeah, it all it all worked out. And we had to do it for for 20 plus games. And we got 80 more on the way. Um, so <laughs> it's, well, it's a lot of work. Yeah. Normally, we, we do try to um, get their APIs first, though. So we partner with a lot of them as well and just get the yeah. APIs directly. Sandbox, for instance, um, gave us all their access to APIs, all their images, all the data. Um, Matrix World as well. They've been doing pretty well in trading volume uh, in Asia. Um, yeah, so on and so forth. Um, you can actually, in your own profile, because we have this interesting integration of the maps being directly integrated, you can see a lot of stuff in real time in, in a space, uh, which is different from any other platform that's out there. Uh, you can actually see what you own on the land itself in your profile. Let so me show that that's off. pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't show that off. But here, like, for yeah. example, you could go to other side and then you can go to map view. Ooh. You see all the ones that you own yourself and where they're situated on the map. And you can actually sell directly through here as well. So you could just literally just copy paste this on Twitter if you, I guess, if you don't want to, if you want to box yourself. But uh, be like, yo, check me out. I got I got uh, <laughs> all this, and and it's it's really cool to be able to manage your portfolio in a spatial way. Yeah. Uh, and keep in mind, this is also also multi-chain because we got we have to deal with Immutable X, Polygon, Binance. Um, so it goes on, so on, so forth. So we we've spent like we spent so far seven months just head down building six days a week, twelve hours a day, uh, going nuts over this, just pouring over this. Um, so we want to be that project that's not trying to promise something in six, eight months. We want to be the project that's already done it. We've already finished everything. We're like, like here you go, guys. We're gonna, this project's going to moon. I mean, I've heard jokes about becoming a real estate agent in the metaverse, like things like that. But it seems <laughs> like we're, we're that much closer to that not being a joke anymore. You know, um, sorry, to, sorry to butt in, but just to give you a, a bit of early info, um, we actually are going to kind of let people be realtors on our platform. It's something that I've previous, previously shown to uh, Johnny when we were on call, but it's not coming out in our beta, so it's not included here. But we'll have affiliate links on our platform as well. So you can kind of go and sell. Uh, if you have something listed, you'll be able to get an affiliate link from there and go sell it for me. And you'll get a cut of the marketplace fee. Instead of, instead of your fee, it'll be a marketplace fee. Wow. So uh, I could post something on Twitter like two bedroom, other deeds, plot uh, with a coda, <laughs> three bathrooms. Uh, that's insane. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's insane. And you said it's on the market fee, correct? Like the yeah, yeah. We, we won't charge the user. Insane. Well, I mean, I'm kind of, I'm kind of awestruck and, um, I guess my question uh, for you guys is how big is your team? Are you guys growing? Like what's, what's, what's the, the, like. Yeah. Um, much of the team is based in Vancouver, Canada. Uh, that's where we're based. Um, we, our CTO is based in Lisbon, Portugal, and our developers are there as well. Right now we're a team of 15 people. Um, that includes artists, 3D art designers. Uh, you see this globe is actually completely custom built in Blender. Um, and we need to, and we actually, in order to create these missions and make them as immersive as possible, we're integrating directly with these games and we're building 
kind of our own game as well uh, over time. That's what the Viators as an IP can, can be capable of. Um, and uh, we're looking to expand the team uh, as um, as we grow in the next three to six months. And the plan is to get to 150 games and uh, all the EVM blockchains covered by end of this year. Sorry, end of 2023. So, yeah. So, so I had a really good conversation in voice chat earlier about Web3 Gaming. I'm going to kind of get a, a little a little in-depth and curious to hear your all's thoughts. It's a marketplace that specifically runs off of, of Metaverse and Web3 Gaming, uh, essentially. Um, you know, there are a lot of criticisms to mm-hmm. gaming and Web3 Gaming, specifically mm-hmm. on the, the way it's funded, right? Uh, it seems like a lot of projects, their idea of funding is to mint land or mint these mm-hmm. assets without a game, right? And so now mm-hmm. we're waiting months sure. and maybe even years to even play this game. How do you get <laughs> that uh, kind of play out into, you know, your all's thing? Yes, I can buy other deeds, you know, mm-hmm. land, but like mm-hmm. when that ever be 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 accessible? Uh, are, are you guys doing a good job at, at making sure the games are going to be able to deliver on these things that you guys mm-hmm. are on your platform? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so with the case of either deed, to be honest, it's it's such huge trading volume. It's such a big player um, in this space. So uh, we have them included, obviously. Um, with our curation process, that's the big thing. Uh, we actually curate these games. And in the future, as viders, you'll be able to participate in the curation process and, and vote on the games that are in the pipeline. Um, but we are we have a specific set of criteria that we look at in terms of if you're or a game uh, and in order to be listed um, this criteria has to be okay your game must be playable on day one and it must be free to play um, the the problem with a lot of the i would say older generation of web3 games i'm already saying older generation the web3 just moves too fast but like the previous generation of, of these games like axie infinity required you to pay to be able to play and get in um, with it but with this new wave of Um, It would be play and earn or free to play or free to own type of games. Uh, What their focus is on is getting people interested in the game itself. And the earning aspects come from the fact is is optional. The earning part is optional and is certainly another uh, dimension to interact with the game with. At the bottom of all of this is you own your assets and that's never going to change. Um, we pre- the games that we're working with right now from these indie studios that are ex AAA game designers, they're building games that basically create this future where you're gonna have two games and they're both of the same. They're both fun to play. They're both of the same graphics quality and the game design is excellent. But one, you own your assets. Right. And one, you don't. One, you have uh, no choice. You can't, you have to sell on, you know, your assets in their platform. Like Roblox charges like 72% commission on their users. And that's just insane. It's insane. Um, So, you know, when you're faced with that simple decision where two games are both just as good and one, you have the freedom and flexibility to sell your assets if you get bored of the game or potentially make money in the game, then, then that's the future that we're building towards. Also, to add on that, I think that's why our About page is very important. So on the About page, you can see when the NFT was released, a little more information. You can stay up to date as to whether or not it's currently in development or playable. Um, And that's where kind of the announcements or the updates or more information will be. Um, It's part of game discoverability as well, right? Um, Some games in the about page will be playable while others are you know beta coming soon we're actually all playing like a couple of games right now that i can uh show uh, maybe after the call ryan if you're interested we can give you a a quick list there's some really fun ones that are coming up beacon's been looking really good lately as well i've been having some fun with that yeah we've been playing that yeah, I'm. I'm like again. I, I'm a skeptic until proven other. I, I'm also a big gamer, right? Um, yeah. I have. I, have uh, I at one point had like seventeen uh, hundred uh, physical games in my collection. So like, I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm a gamer. Wow. Uh, and you know, just all sorts of things like that. 
Uh, so, you know, I, I'm in a lot of communities that mm. NFTs and that are super skeptical of them. Mm. So, uh, I am not obviously skeptical of NFTs or NFT gaming. It's just, I haven't seen anything that has proved to me that, oh, this was a good use case for an NFT yet. So that's mm. why I ask that. But obviously I, I think that that potential's there. I mean, yeah. even with some of the examples you guys have here, I think the potential's there just they haven't done it yet, right? So, so that, that's that was mm-hmm. what my question was, and, and and I appreciate that answer and that response. And and of, of course, I'd love to see that kind of stuff done. <laughs> I think I think what's especially helpful is that on our end, we're working so closely with so many of these up and coming games that haven't even started marketing or pushing anything yet. Mm-hmm. So we get the early alpha on kind of mm-hmm. how things are going, how they look, and man, they're, like they're looking really, really good. Yeah. Yeah, I, and, and, and I'll be honest with you, I see Euro's platform working hand in hand with a lot of these games and their marketing, not necessarily uh, from a shilling standpoint, but from a, hey, early access uh, view of this game uh, that's coming out. We have the, the, the land drops coming in, you know, six months, but we already have an early map to show you where you could you could start you know, planning your, your, your vacation or your, you know, <laughs> or I, I really do see you guys as, a, as an essential marketing tool for future land drops and mm. in, 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 in games. So that's fantastic. I think, I think what's great about being able to play the games early as well is just uh, aside from just being able to play early, you can also get paid to beta test some of them because they're constantly looking for beta testers and it just kind of makes sense. Hmm. Yeah, because I've seen some people get hacked by that. But yeah, no, I, I get what you're saying. Uh, yeah, um, a lot of I think uh, also the the aspect that we're here, um, the viators are essentially the power the power users and the the benefactories of this entire platform. We we don't have just an NFT project that is trying to build something um this is actually an nft project that's backed by a whole platform that has a sustainable business model a business model that is funded um by a crap ton of vc funding uh, from all of these games vc's actually invested like 12 like 9 million eth this year into uh, web3 gaming so and gaming takes a long time to develop it's not like just an nft project which you know the art could take several months but this takes years and like dozens and dozens of developers and artists to make a, a proper game so you know all these games are have yet to um to flourish to debut so uh for us it's it's a matter of, of being early um and capturing all that value before it and delivering that value uh, to viators, our earliest supporters and our um, our holders. So this is this is more than just an NFT project. It's a it's a whole ecosystem, and the ecosystem supports a sustainable way to provide value to holders. Yeah, and 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 one thing that that this kind of reminds me of is I remember back in the God. Uh, back in the day when I, I would play and look for new MMOs to play. Uh, this is a yeah, lot ago. Me too. Uh, there was like a website called MMORPGs.com or something like that. And they would have... A Yo, list I was just talking about that. I was like, guys, you know, we are like the Web3 MMORPG.com. And then people were like, what? <laughs> so it would be, it would be the list of all these MMORPGs and someone would be like, you know, beta. Someone would, It would say playable. It would say, you know, coming soon and things like that. And that's kind of what this reminds me of. Sure, sure. Those kinds of things, um, but w- one thing I think you know, not to not to pat anyone on the back or anything like that, but I, I think her and her team should get some some credit for sure. But the heuristics and the just the the entire layout and, and design of of the the website looks really really intuitive. It's something that that baffles me that other you know giant ocean like. <laughs> marketplaces <laughs> but like, somehow you guys who are not nearly as I, I doubt you have billions in funding but you have not been able to to, to discover but you, you've done it uh so eloquently so so kudos to you guys on that part too thank you diane's thank you. Been yeah, doing an incredible job diane's hardcore <laughs> she started getting carpal tunnel because of how long we work and she has to have That's precise nice. clicking when doing ui so Every button that is on this interface has we had interviewed a user for, and they they said okay it's better if that was there. 
because it's more intuitive. We spend, you know, uh, a great deal of time just to make sure everything is like so obvious and so easy to understand for traders and for newcomers as well. So I think like all of us in this space um, uh, are, are looking for like the next thing, right? And we're we're a platform that I know everyone says, oh, we're going to onboard new users, onboard new users. Like, but in order to truly do that, you actually have to like grind and go in and talk to new users and figure out where they are, where they live and like give them the, hey, check this out. This is cool. And actually do that. And that's what we're doing, right? Even like coming here, talking with you guys, like getting you guys involved and and, and, and sharing what we've learned um, over the last couple months. And this is something that we, we, we want to do at scale again and again and again. And um, we got to, you know, we don't want to just be a project that's building in the dark. And now we have, we have something to show. So we're out here and I'm really thankful for this opportunity as well. Awesome. No, I, I, I love, I love to see it. I love to hear it. I love to hear, you know, when I, when I do these interviews, it's, it's oftentimes, um, it, it's hard to get a read on the people you talk to. Like, do they mm-hmm care about the project or is this just something they're trying to you know make a quick buck on clearly uh from from your all's uh, voice it sounds uh like a, like a, almost like a passion project for the company uh so so i'm very i'm very very excited and, and again seeing this i had heard mumblings in the background uh, i think from johnny maybe about about uh about this maybe i heard zillow for metaverse or something like that uh, I remember hearing that phrase somehow, uh, and and I was like, oh, okay. I, I didn't expect it to be this crazy, so I'm I'm really <laughs> to to be talking to you guys. Um, you know, uh, curious to to know, you know, the community aspect of it, because obviously there's an NFT, and 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 you guys mentioned, you know. Um, you know, being getting access to NFTs from other other games coming up and things right. like that. Um, you know, how do you guys balance? You know, it, it's one thing for me to be a part of a you know a, a Metaverse HQ as a community. Then it's another thing for me to be a member of Board Ape Yacht Club as a community. And now I have to be a member of an aggregator website for you know part of their community. Can you give us some some like? Hmm. reasons and 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 like uh motivations hmm. that that are really going to make us want to be passionate uh nls hmm. users it's hmm. a good question let me think about that i think the idea is that gaming brings people together as a gamer myself um and an nft trader i think what made me fall in love with the space hmm. is trading together um talking about alpha those communities are what made NFT trading fun, right? Um, but people are moving away from just pump and dumps or rug pulls. People want NFTs that actually have real use. Um, our goal with meta listings and with riders is to allow people to meet one another, play games together, and actually trade NFTs that are meaningful. Um, so it's not just about being a community of a platform. It's more like meet friends, play, share. Um, we have content as well. Um, Oscar just briefly talked about it, where you'll see videos. Um, we'll actually share uh, content creator videos as well. Um, and that allows you to learn more about the games, play the games, be excited about the games, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah. Right on. Well, you know, we have a few people in voice chat right now, um, and and I want to make sure that I open it up to questions. Uh, mostly, I feel like Kai might have a question. Uh, I don't know. You just been really passionate. <laughs> just feel like he's like a question. No, he's, he's been talking, talking in the chat. I, I've been seeing him oh, talking. Okay. Are you higher? Oh, I didn't even open the chat. People were talking in the chat. Hey, man, how are you doing? Hey, how are you? <laughs> Pretty good. Excited that you're you you like the project. Oh, it looks amazing. Thank um, you. When I Appreciate saw the it. the other deeds map, I was like, oh, I, I well, I saw that you. I saw right away. You must have coded this yourself. 
What'd you say? Any questions for the team? Um, other than, uh, are you hiring? No. <laughs> <laughs> soon, soon. <laughs> Not quite okay. just yet. Not quite yet. Awesome. Well, yeah. uh, thanks for the feedback, Kai. Uh, again, I just thought. <laughs> Oh, I just saw um, Wiz Daddy ask something in the chat. Uh, do you guys have influencers on board? Yeah, we're we're working with a lot actually. Um, so we have on our advisory board we have Champ, Gorilla, NFT Boy, Ape List, J Dot Hamilton, um, and some others as well. I'm still talking to some of the other biggest names in the space currently, um, but can't reveal too much until things are finalized. Mm-hmm. One of the um communities i think that doesn't get talked about maybe as much in our immediate nft space is i think the international community and that's something that um uh, i want to bring like a little bit of light to um with the with the um when it comes to these types of games there is like this financialization aspect to, to it and we're seeing this huge rise in um these games uh, uh, taking hold in Brazil, in India, in obviously Southeast Asia. And so we really want this platform to kind of open things up for this kind of thing on a global scale. So for that, that means introducing more people into our ecosystem instead of maybe just um, the few friends that we know. And that's something I think is a little bit underrated. Yeah, no, I, I think I think so too. Matter of fact, I've, I've had conversations with uh, NFT communities that are specifically based in different different continents uh, around the world, and you know their mm-hmm. their view on NFTs is so much different than ours. Yeah. That are popular there are so much different than ours, uh, and I'm always like, you know, I've never heard of this, or, or, or why don't you guys like this? And it's like, well, because like when they're doing any event or when they're doing anything or when they drop this. It's you know it's two a.m. in my my time. I can't yeah, yeah. be around there. <laughs> get involved in the community, which makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So so I I do I do love that that uh, understanding uh, of, of international um, yeah. importance. Yeah, yeah. And, and sometimes just just to play devil's advocate, it's also we also like the same things we do. Like I've met uh, people that hold the same NFTs as I do, uh, that our our team does, and they're based in like Malaysia, Indonesia, or Japan, or Taiwan, and they're also into the same things we do, and they think the the same things that are cool. Um, and now we have a platform to kind of show it all off into into these spaces. So we're working with uh, a game guild in Brazil uh, for primarily Spanish and Portuguese speakers. Um, we're working with a game guild in Southeast Asia called Digital Strategy, and um, and that's primarily Indonesia, Malaysia, uh, and they're super into it. Uh, sometimes for like the same reasons that we're into it too. Um, so that's something that we want to de- develop over time. I think our globe graphic also kind of sums it up nicely. We want to connect these worlds, uh, Web two and Web three, um, East and West, developing and developed um, these game worlds with gamers, that kind of thing. You. you- Brazil and it brought back uh, I had PTSD from from thinking back playing an MMO that was very Brazilian based and anytime you'd be walking around someone would ask BR 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 <laughs> and if you said no they would kill you uh, <laughs> 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 you said Brazil oh no um, that's awesome well you know not to get too in the weeds in alpha and you know you guys the releasing information that you're not able to can you give us maybe like top three games that you guys are excited for that mm-hmm. um, maybe are under the radar or, or that are mm-hmm. upcoming that you guys are going to be working with again no, nothing nda breaking or anything like that but mm-hmm. maybe just a top three can you guys hear me yeah i can hear you fine okay i have, um, I have some we, that come to mind already but how about we each do one game? Because you said three and the three of us. Oh, I have two in mind. Okay, you can go first. Um, I'm always into like the fantasy dragons, medieval stuff. So there's there's like two Dark Souls like games. I don't know if you guys play Elden Ring or Dark Souls. They're like kind of hardcore. You die like 55 times before you kill like one boss. Um, I'm really into those masochistic like 
and if I beat it, I'm a god gamer type of games. So one's called Avalon, and the other one's called Fabled, and they're both um, free to play with uh, optional earning mechanisms. And I just think it's cool to own your own castle, um, you know, build stables, get horses, and then fight in an action type of MMORPG. That's one I'm really, and, and it's AAA graphics too on Real Engine 5 all over it. So excited about that. What was that name? Sorry. Um, there's two, Fabled and Avalon. They're similar. For me, I was going to say Fabled. Uh, same as Rich. It's a, it's like an Elden Ring, Dark Souls type of game. And then there's one that I have my eye on. Um, it's called Legend of Wymir or Legend of Ymir. I don't know. Uh, it looks really, really, really good. It's um, yeah, Korean. it's kind of like an MMORPG Korean game. Yeah, that one's really good. Um, literally high, high graphics, like Witcher level. Um, but for me, I'm going to pick more of the cutesy game. Uh, recently, I'm playing Beacon, which is on um, Treasure Marketplace. Uh, that one is really good. And I like um, Townstar. So it's kind of like a farm game. So mm-hmm. there's so many. Honestly, I think the thing is people don't realize um, mm-hmm. these are fun games or you, there's earning potential. Uh, for example, Townstar is similar to Farmsville. It's actually created by the same developer, um, except there's an earning potential. Hmm. Yeah. And the resource management with NFTs is really interesting as well. It's like its own game in of itself. Um, and then you have this whole trading aspect. And if you play with a group of friends, now you can start like gaming things up and that's really fun as well. There's a community aspect to that. Yeah, I, I play a little bit of Star, uh, myself. Uh, wasn't a good game for me, but I had Voxes. I remember when that meant it uh, and held those until they actually profited. Uh, and then, nice. Then, nice. You know what? Not, not the game for me, but I'll, I'll, I got some, they, they launched a town star token or whatever, and I actually was profitable. So it was, it was, it was, I have a great experience at town star, just not my kind of game, but I, I'm with you on, on that stuff. I, I thought it was a really good way to bring in that style of game into the NFT world, into the web three space. So uh, mm-hmm. great call out guys. I love it. Um, well, mm-hmm. uh, I want to give you guys one last opportunity to maybe bring up something that you're excited about that we haven't discussed. And if if that hasn't happened, if we've kind of exhausted everything we can talk about, maybe uh, just a quick, uh, I, whis- I whistled when I said quick, I said quick. I uh, heard it. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe one little uh, bit to go out uh, to kind of summarize everything we've talked about and, and what people can get excited for. Uh, just just before that, uh, I do see one question from Wiz Daddy again. He yeah. said, uh, we like CS loot boxes. Are you guys going to have better RNG for rares? <laughs> I paid too much money for those damn keys to get P90s for days. I have PTSD from CS loot crates too, man. I, I paid a lot back then. Um, yeah, so as you level up on our platform, you'll actually get higher chances to, to get higher rarity items. So we kind of reward people um, as they transact and also explore games on our platform. Hmm. Um, I think for uh, in terms of things that we haven't brushed up on is the the creator side of things. Uh, I think for us, it was knowing our audience here today. Um, We are working with a lot of creators. And one of the things that is kind of missing is content on web3 gaming if you go to twitch you go to tiktok you go to youtube um, most of that is just about investing in the game token and if token go up like that's how it that's great um but there's a lack of actual gaming content and um that's really the next step for us so we have a three-stage process a three-phase process for developing this platform the first is for crypto gamers the second one is centered around content and web2 gamers and then three is mobile because um, mobile is this kind of sleeping giant that's developing and quadrupling the size of the market. So we have this kind of phase process. Um, So the business plan and the business strategy is very long term. And how does that translate to value to holders? Well, that means like, you know, we're here for the long term. 
we're building and we have built. And I think our what we've done this far is proof that we're able to accomplish um, like all of this, right? Um, coming up, we have major partnerships. We're talking with Microsoft. Um, we have connections into Asia through LG Electronics. So a lot of these like Web2 elements are kind of coming coming into play, which I think are good signals for Web3 to continue uh, charging forward. Um, so, so that's kind of like uh, the little snippet uh, that we have upcoming for our project. You'll if you follow our Twitter, and um, we'll be announcing some other updates, some sneak peeks, as well as our website, which we're um, I've been working day and night on for the last couple of weeks, a couple of months actually. So excited to launch that and show everyone. I um I just dropped our Twitter in the chat. Um, I could go over the creator content marketplace because the visuals make a lot more sense if you want me to. Well, I, I'm I'm okay. I think I don't want to like put too much stuff out there right now. So let's just keep that for a little bit okay. later road maybe. Yeah, that's what I figured. Well, now I'm gonna push to to. <laughs> I'm just kidding now. Uh, <laughs> I want to respect lots respect, in the work. Respect the grind, yeah. Um, make it perfect for you guys to release. Uh, <laughs> well, I just want to thank you guys so much again. This is a, a refreshing uh, talk. Uh, I love, I love being wild when I see a demo or when I talk to a team, and and I'm wild right now. I honestly am, and that's not just me uh, pumping you up. So I uh, can't wait to see what you guys deliver uh, and, and when the finished product's out. I know we're looking towards early 2023. Exactly, yeah. I can't believe it's almost in the year. What's that? I can't believe like the year's already gone and over so fast. Just saying. I know. It has been, it's been, it's been like, <laughs> everyone's like, well, maybe it'll just be a year of a bear market. And <laughs> at this point, it's been a year of a bear market and it doesn't feel that true, way. I, I, was, I was into this. I mean, it's crazy to think that I've almost been into this. So room. many things happened this year. It's crazy. Ugh. So uh, just uh, got to figure out which uh, crypto exchange will collapse next. So um, <laughs> fingers crossed it's not mine. Um, well, uh, team, thank you so much for, for, for joining us tonight. Thanks for, for being a partner of MVHQ uh, overall. Mm -hmm. Um, Thank you. Cannot wait to see what you guys have in store. And for everyone listening to this uh, uh, later, thank you for sticking by all the way to the end. Uh, we should have some um, some opportunities to to get in early. Uh, maybe some some possibilities to win some spots for their whitelist. Um, but if not, if you want to go ahead and jump it, uh, I'm sure they'll have a way to sign up on Twitter soon, right? Yeah, yeah, that'll come out fairly soon. But you guys will get some early spots as well. Excellent. Well, again, thank you so much. Everyone have a great night. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to see what's next. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thank, thank you. you for hosting us. Appreciate it. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks everyone, everyone for joining everyone. as well. Bye.